what are your views on on such things as cancel culture and the whole woke movement and trying to keep all narratives politically correct? What's your view on this? Where is this leading us? It's not my view. It's the view of uh, clinical psychology. In the past few years, we have begun to study victimhood movements and the psychology of victimhood movements. So we have, for example, studies by Gabay, G-A-B-A-Y, and allies, four, four massives conducted mainly in Israel. We have studies in British Columbia and so forth, and I'll them for you. What we're beginning to find is that certain people are prone to adopt victimhood as an identity. Their victimhood is their identity. Their victimhood endows their life with meaning, makes sense of the world. So it's an organizing principle. They would seek to be victims, even in situations where they would not have been victimized otherwise. When they are not victimized, they push you to victimize them. This is called projective identification. And so there is something called TIV. TIV is a new psychological term describing these kind of people. You can see these people online, for example, in the empaths movement and other nonsensical labels, where these people are actually very narcissistic, very grandiose, extremely aggressive, lacking in them of any kind, and yet they claim that they have been victimized all their lives because they are super empathic and they are sensitive and so forth, and they are proud of their victimhood. They compete with each other. My abuser was much worse than your abuser. No, my abuse was unprecedented. I understand that you were abused. I'm sorry for you, but my abuse was much... And it's identity politics. It becomes identity politics. A separate set of studies in Canada and elsewhere has shown that very fast, very soon, within usually two to three years maximum, victimhood movements such as Me Too, Black Lives Matter, and so on, get hijacked by narcissists and psychopaths. So the infiltration of narcissists and psychopaths is universal in all these victimhood movements, and they become the public face of the movement. Victim of movements are one of the most threatening and pernicious developments. There, there is a sociologist by the name of Campbell, and he said that we have transitioned from the age of dignity to the age of victimhood. It's very dangerous because if you are a perennial victim, if this is your identity, you are determined by your victim, you would tend to develop attendant behaviors. For example, you would tend to feel entitled to special treatment. And if the, you don't get this special treatment, you will become aggressive. And this is the irony. This was first described by Kaufman. There's a guy called Kaufman. And he described what he called the drama triangle. And he said abusers, the drama triangle includes abuser, victim, and rescuer or savior. But he said these roles are not fixed. When the victim is not gratified by the rescuer, she becomes an abuser. And when the abuser witnesses the behavior of the rescuer, he tries to be the rescuer. So everyone cycles. What I'm trying to say is that the potential for aggression and even violence in victimhood movements is much larger than in the general population. And even I would go as far as saying that it's equal to psychopathic movements. For example, the Nazi movement. Equal. Of course, the Nazi season was a victimhood movement. Nazis presented themselves as victims of the Versailles Agreement, of the World Order. Germany was discriminated against us. And look on where it led. Similarly, communism was a victimhood movement. The proletariat was exploited by the landowners and by the industrialists and so on. We need to redress grievances. Anything that is grievance-based leads to violence and death. End of story. All death cults started as victimhood movements. ISIS is no exception. So it's dangerous.